Welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills. I'm your host, Tia Young. Today we are honored to have an organization who carries the distinction of being a household name around the nation. That organization is none other than the Chamber of Commerce. Today we are graced to have in the studio the Tyson's Regional Chamber of Commerce, along with the Tyson's Partnership. I'm anxious to learn about the strategic alliance between the Tyson's Regional Chamber and the Tyson's Partnership. I'm going to ask each of you to give your name and state which organization you belong. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Tia, for having us. Um, my name is Shirley Liu, and I'm, I'm the uh, Executive Field Chairman with First Financial Security. Shirley? Thank you. My name is Mark Rogoff. I am the Managing Attorney of Title I Settlement Group, and I am also the chairman of the board of the Tyson's Regional Chamber of Commerce. Household name. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and I'm Drew Sunderland with the Tyson's Partnership. I'm the assistant to the director. Good. Strategic Alliance. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, thank you all again so much for coming. I know that Friday is it's not an easy time. You're busy, and you, you took the time out to come here, and I'm grateful and appreciative for that. Um, Mark, let's start with you. Sure. What is the vision and mission of the Tyson's Regional Chamber of Commerce? Excellent question. At the Chamber, our mission slash vision is to be a connection between the businesses of Tyson's and the community itself. And how do we accomplish that? In many ways, through education, through different functions. Specifically, case in point, this jobs fair that we're doing, we are helping new organizations that have come to the region to build their employee base. Okay, Drew, I'm gonna ask you that same question. So the, at the Tyson's Partnership, we have the mission of turning Tyson's into the next great American city. And we have a, our, our mission is by 2050 to double the, uh, the, the jobs in the area from 100,000 to 200,000 and also increase residency from roughly 20,000, where it currently is today, up to 100,000. And at the partnership, we work with our members and also people that are not part of the partnership mm -hmm. to try to build the profile of, of Tyson's, to try to broadcast its many amenities and, and spearhead the initiatives that are going to help us realize that, uh, that mission of making Tyson's the next great American city. Right. Uh, Mark, how many members uh, do you have in the, in the uh, Tyson's chamber? There are several hundred members currently. Wow, okay. Some more active than others, and we're always building our base. We are happy that just recently Intel, Intelsat joined our organization. <laughs> so uh, we are out there trying to bring in the big names with the names on the buildings. Okay, all right. And Drew, how many members in the partnership, Tysus partnership? So we have roughly 100 members, but okay. like I said, we try to think of ourselves as more than just our members. We, right. we like to think of the, the, the Tysus community as a whole, both in the business and residential side. And we are in favor of doing anything that raises the profile of the area. And we now have great resources. First and foremost is the Silver Line. And we are working to try to get people to realize the convenience of that and, and come out to Tyson's to see what we have to offer. Right. Well, Shirley, I mean, you're usually here as uh, hosting your own show, Real Secrets of Money, or you're my co-host. And today you're wearing another shoe or a couple of pairs of shoes. So FFS, that's uh, First Financial Security. So what made you decide to become uh, a partner? And I don't know if you are an independent partner or if you're part of the Tyson's partnership. Well, I'm proudly to say to you that I am a proud member of First Financial Security along with my team with Tyson's Chamber. Oh, okay. Uh, so you're partnering with the Chamber. That is correct. I okay. am a proud member and a proud partner along with my team. Uh, and one of the reasons that we looked around to see, you know, what chambers do we want to belong with and how do we want to grow the business. And, and uh, I deliberately picked Tyson's is because uh, even before Tyson's, looking at space and area, um, I had choices to go almost anywhere. Uh, but I picked Tyson's deliberately because of the growth. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the, not only because of the growth itself, but how Tyson is perceived. Mm -hmm. by the community from mm -hmm. other area. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you this, one of the business partner, um, a gentleman was going to do business with me, and before he even really know who I was or what, what we're about, his question to me was, 
uh, where is your office? And the minute I say McLean, you know, he was like, Tyson, I'm there to meet with you. And when he came, he said, because of that city, he knew I wasn't operating a business, a hole in the wall kind of deal, and the, the name itself just brought a totally mm -hmm. different kind of clientele. Um, so that's why you know I felt it was important to be in Tyson's and also to partner with the Tyson's Chamber. Said so name recognition. That and that what you say is really true. A couple of years ago, I was in um, uh, Las Vegas for a a conference, and I. Out of the hundreds of people that I met, at least a third of them, when I told them where I live, oh, are you near Tyson's Corner? Everybody knows about Tyson's. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I was like, oh, wow. I'll well, <laughs> well, just let you know, I, so, I signed a seven-year contract for my building, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're going to be there. Time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other question I wanted to know, I know that, um, I know that and we're going to get into the job fair that you guys are uh, working together on. but. Do you do most of your projects independently or do you work everything together? Tell me about the alliance, the strategic alliance that you have with the um, Tyson's partnership. Sure. Well, I will say that up until now, most of what, most events that have been done by the Chamber of Commerce has been just the Chamber. We have sponsors, sure. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is we are taking advantage of the several different organizations in Tyson's that help the, org the community grow, such as the partnership, case mm -hmm. in point. Mm -hmm. So our part of our mission in becoming that connection is to work with other organizations in a synergistic fashion. Okay, all right. True. And, and I, I think that Mark said it very well. I mean, the partnership, like I said, we're, we're, in a, we're a collaborative organization. Right. And we're constantly looking to work with uh, other organizations and individuals even who have the same strategic vision. And in this case of the job fair, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, the, uh, the Tyson's Chamber of Commerce has done a wonderful job of, of putting this together. And when we were asked to partner up, it just seems like a perfect event to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish and to show job seekers uh, the, many, the many opportunities that await them in Tyson's Corner. And to get back to the name recognition, uh, Tyson's is the 12th biggest business district in the country. Ooh, wow. It's I massive. Didn't know that. And I, 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 that, that's something I think a lot of people from this area take for granted. Yeah. Um, also, right, it I has did. its fair share of uh, Fortune 500 companies. And I believe that of the roughly 17 that have headquarters in this area, uh, majority of them actually have their headquarters in Fairfax, and including uh, including Tyson. So this is a huge commercial area, and and with tons of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, the moment has arrived for us to start talking really about the job fair. Um, when is this job fair? Well, I'd be happy to let you know that it is October 6th through the 9th. Okay. Oh, it's more than one day. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's a serious it's job a week. there. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of jobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's October 6th, and, and where? So there are several different locations during the week. Get out of here. Absolutely. <laughs> this is big time. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. So what we're, the design of the locations is to go up the Silver Line. Okay. So on Monday, we are having the, at Seavent, um, over by the Greensboro Metro Station. And then we move up to Tuesday where we are um, having a government contract job at the same location. Wednesday, there is an after hours event at a place in the mall. So we're continuing along. And then the Thursday, there's a job fair and a career building workshop at the mm -hmm. Sheridan Tyson's. Now that's going to be the largest of all of the events, and that's at the Spring Hill Station. Okay. So we right. see we're moving up the Silver Line and strategically placing things along the way. What time does it start? Is it every day the same time or different times? There are different times. Okay. Um, we're putting together the timing now. Um, the Thursday event is pretty much going to be all day. Then the different, uh, the obviously the after hours functions in the evening, mm -hmm. and then the other events GovCon will be a few hours, mm -hmm. a few hours of each. And everything, all the details, as they come available and are ironed out, will be available on our website, which is www.tysonschamber.com.
dot org. Okay, very good. Now this next question is for all three of you, and we may have to uh, uh, cut to a break, but at least we'll get started. And I want to start with Drew. Why do we need a job fair? We need a job fair, like I said, because we have such a unbelievable um, pool of highly educated people in the Washington, D.C. area. In fact, it's the most highly educated city in the country. And there are a lot of people that have or are either unemployed and looking for jobs, and there are people who are underemployed. And then there are also people who just have jobs that they don't really want anymore and they're looking to step up. And Tyson's has such a, a valuable um, wealth of these jobs from all all across sectors, from hospitality to retail to technology. Um, and in fact, this job fair focuses on levels from entry level all the way up to the executive. And mm -hmm. for GovCon, for the uh, second day on, on October 7th, there are there will be positions available for people with clearance and, and people without clearance. So this is a very high level job fair. And I just want to make sure that we plug the website here. Uh, it's uh, tysonsjobexpo.com. And anyone with any questions or uh, seeking out details, please refer to that website. Okay, Correct. very good. Mark, we have two minutes. Why, why, in your perspective, why do you think we need to have this job there? Well, Drew did an, a nice job of covering it, but I will talk about the fact that this area is becoming an epicenter of formidable organizations and growth is um, expeditious at this at this time and therefore there is a need for employees it, okay. so we are trying as we said earlier to make that bridge we're trying we're trying to take the organizations that need those employees to connect them with the employees and this is the perfect way to do it okay Shirley you are in and I may have to cut you off but you can at least get started you're in the financial services uh, arena, so how, how, what, what could that do for uh, in your discipline? Well, just real quick, uh, Sharon and I, you know, at the Chamber of Tyson's Chamber about a couple months ago, um, I knew that I needed to staff up uh, because I'm very at the forefront of the Obamacare uh, and also the Medicare You're that's fine. coming out with the new roles. Um, so therefore, I, the last sign up, I was killed. You know, I didn't have enough people signed up and clients, you know, were sitting there with that situation. So I didn't want it to happen again. So I was trying to staff up from my point of view, agents to be able to be ready and rock and roll come October 15th, which is like a couple weeks away, and, and November 14th sign up. You know, as you know, even in the news, about 200,000 Virginians have to redo their uh, Obamacare situation because right. the state of Virginia and of course. So you can bring on professional agents, train them how to become professional Absolutely. licensed Absolutely. It's a totally agents. different field. I mean, I've hired many veterans, uh, mm -hmm. guys and gals, totally changed from IT or even doing, you know, veterans uh, stuff um, and become uh, in the financial industry. And uh, it's different for them. It's very different for them. But you know, they're doing great. Okay. Very good. Well, we are going to take a short station break, but we will return with our panel from the Tyson's Chamber of Commerce and the Tyson's Partnership. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. They say it takes a village. We focus on the truth about things that are happening in the DMV through the voices of the people who live, work, and play on Main Street. Tune in every week to discover how the community is coming together for the greater good of every resident. Welcome back. You're watching Skills to Pay the Bills, and we are continuing our discussion on upcoming projects in the strategic alliance between the Tyson's Regional Chamber of Commerce and the Tyson's Partnership. Uh, before the break, Shirley, you were telling us about how you're going to hire all these uh, agents and bring them on and get them employed and making tons of money. Mm -hmm. um, I run into people all of the time, and they're, it's like this hopelessness that's in them where they don't feel that they're ever going to find a job. And when you tell them about uh, job fairs, they, they'll say something like, oh, you know, you go there and you fill out a couple of papers, nobody really talks to you, and, you know, I, I just don't think I'm ever going to find anything. What, what would you say to, to that, to that thought, to people who feel that way? Wow. Well, I do know some friends who did take some time to get a job. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to be consistent in terms of just continuing 
to search for jobs, continuing to update your resume. There are many different sources in today's day and age um, for job availability. So when I have spoken to people who are looking for jobs, they used every avenue and specifically an org a function such as the jobs fair will be will go a long way to helping them as well. Well, and your job fair is more than one day. That's what mm -hmm. is impressing me that you've got Absolutely. several days. Uh, um, is, is there retail jobs? Are there jobs? I heard you say government contracting mm -hmm. earlier. So can you talk a little bit about the types of uh, opportunities yeah. that will be there? Absolutely. And, and I'd like to just sort of get back to your question about the yeah. value of a job yeah. fair. Now, the hardest part I've found with applying for a job is getting someone to look at my resume and getting that face-to-face -face contact, mm -hmm. contact with, a, with an employer. And with a job fair, you get to go and have face-to-face contact with potential uh, employers, show them your resume, talk about your experience and your interests. So it's an incredibly vital, vital tool for, for job seekers. And also, it, it gives you a well-rounded uh, understanding of the jobs available. Because a lot of people looking for jobs have ideas of what they want to do, but are also open to other things, and this gives them an opportunity to learn about that. Like I said before, we have we, we cover the gamut of, of uh, industries in this job fair, so it's really a very well-rounded. And of course, there's the Tuesday uh, uh, GovCom, which is more focused, but mm -hmm. applicants will have the ability to meet with a host of, of large companies looking to hire, and that's very valuable. So folks, you heard it right from Drew. It's wide open, it's not just retail. Retail is good, but it's not just retail. It just, you cover the gamut, as mm -hmm, you said, mm -hmm. with everything. Uh, Shirley? Yeah, I'd like to add to what uh, Drew was saying, is that um, one, the one thing nice about first financial security is that I'm hiring all. You know, and some people said, well, I want to go IT, and I want to do, and I want to stay, you know, core focus in what I do. And my, my advice to them, look, I said, look, here's the deal. Still continue to look what you need to do. However, you know, I do have an opportunity here that I do need to help. You know, what if, what if you came in, even work with me part-time basis, and if you really like it going full-time, what have you got to lose? You know, it pays very, very solid, good money of what we do, and is in, in the needs industry right now that everybody's looking from health, you know, uh, I mean, from health, Medicare, and retirement, uh, all those kind of things. And, you know, and being at the forefront of the job fair, um, I was able to help quite a few of those people that's been unemployed that goes into a COBRA health insurance plan, which costs four or five times more than a regular plan, whereas during the time of being unemployed, they could qualify for a minimal cost with subsidy from the uh, ACA, Affordable Health Care Act, you know. And so I want to be at the forefront in, in sharing those knowledge uh, with the unemployed folks. Uh, okay, so, you know, we can help all that. And I think these job here brings into those information that people don't know. You know, they don't know that you don't have to go with COBRA. You could have an outside plan mm -hmm. that is, I mean, much less, uh, so. Okay. Wow. Well, let, let me ask this. Now, um, I'm assuming, and I should have asked this earlier, that the job fair is open to anyone in the metropolitan area, or is it just Virginians? Virginia uh, residents. Can anybody come from D.C. or Maryland? Anyone can come okay. and we encourage them to ride the Silver Line out because well, that's a, That was my next question. That's, that's, that's a <laughs> that major amenity question. and in fact you can get from downtown D.C. Mm -hmm. to the Tyson's Corner stops uh, within 35 minutes. Okay. And I, I've had several commutes inside of D.C. on Metro that have been way longer than that. So okay. um, it's, it's really, it's an unbelievable resource uh, for, for job seekers because it opens up a whole new world uh, that prior to the Silver Line was you had to sit in traffic or um, you, you, you didn't even have an opportunity to get the job unless you had a car, really. Right. In your estimation, what would be some of the advantages of working in, in, in the Tysons area? I know some of them we've touched on a little bit, but specifically with people coming here for jobs, what would you say some of the advantages are? Well, I would talk about the fact that the goal of the development in this area is to make a self-sufficient community mm -hmm. so that people who live, who work, can also live. There are several new buildings that are going up in this area, rentals that um, are only giving one parking spot near the metro because they're encouraging people to be pedestrian. And the, mm -hmm. and the goal um, is to transform this area up and down the Silver Line to a pedestrian-focused area 
so that you can work, live, shop, do everything you want without having to get into a vehicle. So mm -hmm. does that mean that this area, uh, I've lived in this area, say, maybe 20 years, and I, I have seen it change. And to me, in my estimation, it's like it's more and more urban. Is that, is that what you, would you agree with that or disagree uh, with that? It seems like it's changed a lot. Well, I would say that it is somewhat of a, of a mixed feel. Mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, they're going for a super city. I've heard it called an edge city. So it is a smaller, more of a community feel than the District of Columbia. Right. Mm -hmm. On that end, what about you, Drew? What do you say? Well, I mean, the, the, one of the one of the goals of um, of the comprehensive plan for Tyson's is to basically make most of this development without within a three to five minute walk of the various metro stops. So, and 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 to create a sustainable city. So I say to job seekers and people looking to relocate here potentially, you have the opportunity to grow with a rapidly growing city. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you always want to be in a growth industry, you, and why not be in a right. growth city as well? Right, Shirley. Well said. But how do you feel? Because you've lived in this area. For yeah, a while. well, have you seen a change? Uh, definitely. Um, uh, I think, uh, as a matter of fact, my daughter, she's 11 years old, <laughs> and she was like, "Mommy, there's new condo coming right there. Mm -hmm. You could just buy it and walk to work." You know, I mean, and that's her sentiment about you know being close to everything. You know, and this is coming from a young kid, let alone you know a lot of professional folks. I believe, like you said, view that way as well. Mm -hmm. You know. What about uh, the affordability of housing? Because I'm, I'm seeing office complexes go up, but I'm also seeing a lot of housing, as you uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, is that going to be affordable for people, do you think? You think you yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> there's, there, there, I mean no, there, are, there are actual requirements to have housing within certain, uh, within, within certain financial uh, reaches. And so that definitely, I mean, we have an issue here in that we don't really have enough housing. We have a lot of rentals, but we don't have a lot of actual um, ownership potential at the moment. And that's part of the plan, like I right. said, is to rapidly build from the 20,000 where we currently are, I think we're just under at the moment, up to that 100. Mm -hmm. And it's everyone knows that there's no way to build a city that's functional um, without opportunity for all people to live. In, and, and it can't just be uber expensive housing. It has to be well balanced. Okay. Now the employers that are going to be at the job fair, what kind of reaction have you had from them? Have they been really excited about doing this and really serious about hiring people? I would say yes. I mean there's been an excellent, um, discuss uh, everyone's been excited about it. The reaction's been great. A case in point, last night we had a mixer at the Barnes mm -hmm. um, at Wolf Trap for the chamber and a gentleman who represented MITRE who is one of our silver sponsors happened to be there and he was very excited about the jobs fair because he is a recruiting officer for MITRE and he thought it was an excellent idea and he was looking forward to um, the fair itself. Are you able to, to tell us some of the uh, uh, employers that are going to be there? Is that a top secret? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> on our flyer that goes out, there are several sponsors mm -hmm. who are also going to be there, and we wanted to make it a point to make sure we thank them. Obviously, First Financial Security has to be thanked. Uh, we have Cvent, uh, Northrop Grumman, mm -hmm. um, Skill Source Group, MITRE, Intelsat, and many more. Mayor, um, the Hilton. Hilton is going to be we'll definitely there, okay. be there as well. Mm -hmm. Any I'm leaving out. Booze. Booze. Booze yeah. Allen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, the other question I had, it kind of goes back to what Drew was saying earlier about the resumes. Um, other comments that I've gotten from people is that something's gone crazy with submitting resumes now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole different ball game. If you don't have um, certain buzzwords mm -hmm. on it, uh, an HR person is not necessarily looking at it, it's going into a computer. And a lot of people don't know that, so they're doing their resumes up um, in the old-fashioned way. And mm -hmm. uh, when they submit them, they're not really going to an HR person, they're going into a computer you know, system some way, and if they don't have those buzzwords on mm -hmm. there, uh, they're, they're resumes are going into file 13. <laughs> so what, what kind of advice would you give to people that are putting their resumes together? Come to the job fair. 
<laughs> that's, well that's said. my number one. So well they said. don't have think, to have a resume mm -hmm. well, no, when I they think get there. There's actually a requirement that you have to upload your resume uh, to the website. Again, I'm just going to plug the website, tysonsjobsexpo.com. Mm -hmm. So you do have to, up to upload your, your resume to the website. But the job, the job fair gives you a unique opportunity to get past that firewall that uh, you know where you submit up you right. digitally submit your resume and if you don't have the proper buzzwords or um, your title isn't good enough you you get thinned out uh, this you have the opportunity to make a, a, a person to person contact and that's the most powerful tool when looking for a job is to get in front of, a, of, of an employer looking to hire and show them who you are okay. beyond just what's written on paper so when they when uh, you know I'm at the job fair and I'm coming up to an employer um, Am I going to really get an opportunity to talk to that person or am I crowded out by 50 other people and we're pushing each other in the line to get out? How is that, are, are they going to have a lot of uh, um, HR people there to kind of help out? There's going to be a fair amount of people on staff there and we have various um, companies occupying rooms in uh, at least on the first day. Um, and it all depends on how many people show up. I mean, there's a at a point where well, I know, bet you have a lot if, of people. If if it's too, I, I can't uh, I can't crowd control beyond a certain point. <laughs> but yes, we are we are uh, we are planning on making this worthwhile because we want to do more in the future, and we want people to have a great experience. And then uh, when we have future job fairs. We want them to say, you know what, that, that, that's, a, that's a must do. I have to go to that job fair. Okay. Because our right. goal is to make this an annual event. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. That was going to be my next question. Okay. So it is an annual event. Well, I want to thank you guys and gals for coming out to thank this afternoon you. for um, Skills to Pay the Bills. And uh, that job fair f sounds really exciting. You know, I may just take a roving camera there and just take some shots and Please do. see what it is. Up, upload your resume before you right. come down. Right, I will make sure I'll do that. Our time is up. We want to thank you for watching our show and a very special thanks, of course, to the Tysons Regional Chamber of Commerce and the Tysons Partnership for sharing not only the alliance between the two organizations, but we have learned more about the values and the mission and the vision of these two outstanding organizations. If you have any questions regarding today's show, please contact me at the information scrolling on your television screens right now. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.